We lived, I think, incredible lives when you consider all that has happened in the North for the last 30 years and the reality that a lot of violence was used by the British Army, by the RUC, by the Loyalists. And, of course, in, in a situation like that, and, you know, look at South Africa, look at the Middle East, you can clearly see yeah. that in situations where people believe that they're being discriminated against, treated unjustly, uh, oppressed, people will fight back. That is a natural human response. But, but, but going back to the reason for the change, uh, the mindset, really, of the leadership, the visible leadership of the Republican movement, is it because you all reached a certain age? I mean, you've been doing this since you were kids. No, I think that that, that is a very simplistic analysis. But it's part, uh, is it part of it? No, I mean, the, the, the reason why we had a peace process was because the leadership of Sinn Féin worked very, very hard to develop that peace process. Jerry Adams worked very hard with John Hume. I was given the task on behalf of the Sinn Féin leadership to engage with representatives of the British government at the, the beginning of the 90s. And we, of course, did a lot of work with Albert Reynolds and with the, the Irish government and, and, and all the representatives of the Irish government. And we worked hard with the Nationalist Ireland to put in place a political project which would compel the leadership of the British government and the leadership of the unions to face up to the reasons why there was conflict okay, in our country. There were also uh, uh, little bits of serendipity, if you like, because Albert Reynolds got on well with John Major. That was a bonus. Yeah. Then the Labour Party come in and, and Tony Blair was very positive towards resolving the whole thing. Mo Molan was very helpful, and I don't know what you think of Peter Mandelson, but certainly um, he seems to be delivering, however you mightn't like his attitude, you know, all the time there's, there's delivery, delivery, delivery. Well, you know, I think all of those people have been on, on a journey. Uh, certainly the community that I come from have believed since partition that they were effectively abandoned, not just by London, but also by Dublin. That's and, of course, the peace process brought about a set of circumstances where you had political leaders in both London and Dublin facing up to the reality that they could either allow this vicious circle of injustice and conflict and violence to continue or face up to what was required to put in place a real peace process. And, of course, uh, the thing clicked. It clicked because Albert Reynolds was prepared to take risks, because within the British government... Tony Blair was prepared to take a risk because Bill Clinton was prepared to take a huge risk in the United States, and it all came together, and it all created a set of circumstances, as we predicted at the beginning of the 90s, that eventually we would bring about a set of circumstances where inclusive negotiations would take place and that an agreement come out okay. of that. Now, um, there, are still, there is still an unfinished business. Um, I mean, there's the decommissioning row, which is causing David Trimble a lot of problems. I mean, if you talk to people here, they will say, we, we want the guns destroyed, we want them put out of use, but they're not that exercised about it. Um, they, they think it'll happen in time. But David Trimble has an imperative from within his own party, and he's looking uh, for help. And he's done this thing, you know, it was possibly the cutest thing he could have done. It was something for the Donaldsons of the world. But it's not such a big deal, is it, this north-south meeting uh, cessation? Because it's, it's probably not going to be effective anyway, is it? It's a huge, big deal. Because the reality is that David Trimble has effectively prevented Barbara de Bruyne going as a member of the executive in the north to a north-south ministerial council meeting. The north-south ministerial council is a hugely important element in the Good Friday Agreement. For example, I am due to attend a sectoral meeting on education on the 24th of this month with uh, Michael Woods. If David Trimble continues with the strategy that he has adopted, I will be prevented, and we will then be in a huge crisis. Because it, it has been made very clear in the Good Friday Agreement that the North-South Ministerial Council and the Executive are interlocking and interdependent. Okay, one, one cannot be successful. Okay, but can't you unlock all of that? Um, I mean, under the terms of the Good Friday Agreement, and we know Sinn Féin are not supposed to be the IRA, you don't speak for them, but the commitment that Sinn Féin made was that you do your best Absolutely. to influence, right? Yeah. Um, so if you can do your best to get the IRA to re-engage with the Shastelin, to do something, whether it's, as you know, someone said, a, a big bang and a bog in the Republic, but something is required to if you like, unlock this logjam which has been created by the decommissioning argument and David Trimble's internal problems in, in the Ulster Unionist Party? Well, the Good Friday Agre Agreement gave the responsibility for cracking that nut to all of the political parties and the two governments. The reason why we're in a difficulty is because there's a difference of opinion as to how it is best resolved. 
we have on one side, if you like, the securocrats within the British military establishment who regard this as a huge issue for them. People might find that hard to believe, but take it from me, I have a lot of experience in dealing with these people. These were the people who thought up the decommissioning issue and handed it sure. as a weapon for the unionists. And, of course, we have the unionists who have their opinion as to how it is best dealt with. Now, nobody should be under any illusions where the Sinn Féin leadership is coming from in all of this. What we are pledged to do, absolutely committed to do, is to end the injustice, end the discrimination, okay. end the inequalities, and to end the conflict, and also and. to remove all the guns yeah. from Irish politics. But, but, but there's this simplistic notion, Pat, that the only guns in the equation which need to be removed oh, are I the mean, guns I've, of the IRA. I've, I've heard